calicofieldforspace.com and we're talking to Dr. Jennifer Heldman with NASA about the upcoming supermoon. So Dr. Heldman, tell me what is so super about a supermoon? Right, so a supermoon is really special because it's the closest full moon of the year. So it only happens once a year, and it happens because the moon goes around the Earth, but not in a perfect circle. And so sometimes the moon is closer to the Earth than at other times. And so Sunday night is a supermoon for this year when we'll have the moon closest to the Earth, and so the full moon will appear slightly bigger in the sky um, due, the, due to the close proximity. So what makes this event very special is that the supermoon is happening at the same time as the total lunar eclipse. And the last time this happened was 1982, and it's not going to happen again until 2033. So this is a very special chance to actually observe this. And the total lunar eclipse is happening because the moon will be moving into the shadow of the Earth. And so the moon will go from its, you know, bright full moon that we're used to seeing to turning into this beautiful red color, which is the reflection of all the sunrises and all the sunsets on the Earth reflecting off the lunar surface. And then We'll have that, the moon will then move out of the shadow and go back to its bright full moon. So the really special thing is that the supermoon and the total lunar eclipse are happening at the same time, and that's pretty rare. Now, is this uh, interesting to scientists, or is it just interesting for sky watchers? Right, it's interesting for sky watchers, for sure, but it's also super interesting for the scientists. We have the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, NASA's spacecraft orbiting the moon, and we are planning to make very special measurements that we can only uh, make during this special event. So we have a particular instrument, the Diviner instrument, on LRO that will remain on during the total lunar eclipse, and Diviner measures the surface temperature of the moon. So we'll be measuring the surface temperature of the moon during the full moon when it's in the full direct sunlight in the hot oven of the sun. We'll continue making measurements of the surface temperature as the moon moves into shadow, into that deep freeze and gets really cold, and then again as we move out of shadow. And so by looking at those temperature swings, we can tell a lot about the surface of the moon. So these are very unique, very special measurements. So we'll learn not only about the moon and how the moon works, but also by comparison, other planets and other moons in the solar system as well. Fascinating. Um, I, I, you mentioned there the temperature swings. Why do we see that huge temperature swing on the moon during an eclipse? Right, so we see these large temperature swings on the moon because you're going directly from direct sunlight into um, direct shadow. And the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to help modulate the surface temperatures. So the, the temperature swings on the moon are very dramatic. It's going to change by on the order of about 500 degrees Fahrenheit um, over the course of this total lunar eclipse. And so that's a big, big temperature change. Um, and it's very unique for the moon and it gives us this unique opportunity to make these special measurements with the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Now, uh, besides it being a lunar eclipse, will people watching a supermoon can observers on the ground see a difference in the supermoon compared to a regular full moon? Right, so the moon will be on the order of 14% bigger um, than it normally is, and that's hard to detect if you just go out and look. But one thing that people can do is start observing the moon regularly. If you keep going out and looking at the moon, you know, look at it this month and look at it next week and look at it next month and see how it changes. And you can actually measure and see how these differences actually manifest themselves in the sky. So this is a good opportunity for folks to go out and start observing the moon because the more you look at it, the more that you'll, you'll um, understand it and then be able to detect these sorts of changes that we get so excited about here at NASA and beyond. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, so a supermoon might appear slightly larger in the sky. Sometimes when a full moon is very close to the horizon, it also seems to look really large, but that's not the same thing as a supermoon. Can you tell me uh, what the difference between those two things are? Right, so this is a completely different phenomenon. The supermoon is fully governed by the orbit of the moon around the Earth, and the fact that the Earth or the moon's orbit around the Earth isn't circular, and so you really are in closer proximity um, when you're actually having a supermoon. And you're right; sometimes it does look like the moon is bigger when it's on the horizon. It's just kind of a, a an effect of how we perceive things, um, but it doesn't have anything to do with the distance of the Earth and the moon system at all. Fantastic. That's all the questions I have for you, Dr. Hellman, so thank you very much for being with us. Great. Thank you very much. Space.com.